Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to the Stellar Gaming Dev YouTube channel. My name is Andrin and I'm the lead innovation rep and assistant to Stellar Gaming Dev. I was instructed to narrate this video tutorial while Stellar Gaming Dev works on his other YouTube channel, Gen Bop Radio. Today, I'll show you an easy way to make your objects explode with force using only a few GDevelop extensions and behaviors. If you're new to GDevelop or just looking for new ways to make objects explode, this video may be useful to you. So let's go ahead and get started. I will begin by importing the images I want to use for this tutorial into GDevelop. You can use whatever image you like to follow along, but I created an image with an AI prompt using DALL-E. Now anyone who has used such a tool already knows you can get some mixed results with the output. So I'll bring the output over into an external image editing program and modify it a little. Just give me a few moments. All right, now with that out of the way and my characters separated, I can now bring them into GDevelop and use them for this tutorial how I see fit. I am going to make both objects platformer characters by using the GDevelop behavior known as platformer object. It's not really required for this, but I wanted to use it for an example I will do later. And now I will just bring in my characters who I will name JJ and simply Robo into the scene both as platformer objects without the default controls box checked. Let me just rearrange their positions right quick and then I will quickly preview to see if the platformer object behavior is working properly, which will be verified if the objects fall down, since applying this adds gravity to the desired objects. Looks like it's working fine so far, but let's say I didn't want them to fall straight down. In this instance, I would create a new object and give it the GDevelop behavior, simply known as platform. This will make the desired object impassable for platformer objects. I can do this simply by using Piscal to create a default box shaped object for the extension to be applied to. When I have made the proper edits to my liking, I can name, save, and apply the object to the scene. I'm going to quickly check to see if the collision bounding box is to my liking and then I am going to go ahead and add the platform behavior. Once there, I can then reshape the platform object to be the impassable floor for my platformer objects. Let's set the objects further apart for this example. Not bad. Alright, let's take a quick look at the extensions we will be using to make this work. First is the Explosive Force extension. Second is the Shake Object extension. Third is the Object Slicer extension. And last is the Advanced Projectile extension. Now let's take a look at the point the projectile will fire from. As you can see, Robo has more points than normal. He has one for each eye, and another for his ray gun. Each point has a name you can refer to within the event sheet. The point where the projectile will fire from is named beam. Let's move to the event sheet and look at some conditions and actions. I've already placed the conditions and actions, but I'll go through each separately. I have this condition set up to work when the space key is pressed with a trigger once when true. Here I create an object action. Let's look at the details for this. You can see that I have the action chosen, the object the action is applied to, in this case the projectile, and the details. In this field you would type the name of the object and then use point X with the name of the point enclosed in quotations. Simply putting two quotations within the round brackets will bring up all the points of that object and you can select the proper one. You can do the same for the second field by using point Y, and then choose the layer you want the projectile to be on. The next action deals with turning the primary object into a projectile. It controls everything about the properties of the projectile. This is where the advanced projectile extension comes into play. To pull up all the actions for this extension, 
Type either Advanced or Projectile in the search bar and look for the Advanced Projectile properties. We'll be dealing with the projectile starting speed change from my previous value of 380 to just 80. Let's see what it does. As you can see, a speed of 80 in this case makes the projectile move at a fairly slow rate. If we want a faster projectile, we need to increase the starting speed to a higher value. So I'll just go to the action and change the current value of 80 back to my original value of 380. Now let's see what it does. The projectile is much faster. Since we now have a projectile that goes forward we can now deal with what happens when it hits its intended target. This is where the object slicer extension is useful. The details for this extension are composed within this code block. For the conditions I have a collision for the intended target, which is the object JJ and the actual projectile, all set to trigger once. For the actions we can take a look at the object slicer a bit closer to see what we need to do to get it to work as intended. Before we get into that, we need to create a new object for the action to work effectively. This object can, or it is rather recommended, to be a simple white small box you can make in Piskel very easily. After that, the other thing you will need to do is add the physics to behavior to the object. You can set the properties here, but leaving it as dynamic is fine. The object slicer action needs to know three things before it can work properly. Number one, what is being sliced? In this case, it would be the main object, which is JJ. Number two, the object which will be used for sliced pieces. In this case, it will be our white square. Number three, the number of sliced strips you want vertically and horizontally. In this example, I have eight for both. Let's take a look and see what will happen when JJ is hit by a projectile. Okay, now we are getting somewhere. The next thing would be to add a shake object extension to the target when they are hit, but this is completely optional so I can skip it. Instead, I'll just move on to the explosive force extension which will give us the desired effect. For the explosive force extension we will be applying it to the object that has the physics 2 behavior. This would be the white box. So we will click on the simulate an explosion with physic forces action. Now within the action properties we will configure each field for the desired value. For the explosion center X and Y. I will be using the JJ's bounding box position. For the max force I will use 30 for a wide blast. And for the max distance from the explosion I will do JJ's object height multiplied times 2. Once this is completed we can see what happens. And there you have it. The object can now be blown to smithereens. You can control the size and number of the pieces based on the values you put in the object slicer action fields. The explosive force can be increased or decreased as well. It's totally up to you from here. Since Robo looks so sad, we can put a smile on his face so that he can take pride in blasting humans. What is this video about again? Making things blow up. I learned something new. That's right. Time to level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. So the next thing to do would be creating a blast effect. This can be achieved simply by using the GDevelop particle emitter. As you can see I have the properties already set up with 1500 as the end particle size. I want a larger explosion so adjusting the particle end size will help with this. Let me look over some other things before we head to the event sheet. In the event sheet here I made another create an object action but this time the item that will be created will be the explosion. The X and Y position should be set to where you want the particle to occur. In this case it will be where the character JJ is so for you it would be your object period and then X or Y followed by rounded brackets. So in this case it would look like this but instead of JJ you would just use your own object name. Don't forget to set the X and Y coordinates to the same point in the objects editor before doing this. 
This allows the created object to appear in the exact location instead of at different points. Now let's take a look and see what happens when the projectile hits its target. I'll run the engine and then press the appropriate key to fire my ray gun at the target. Might as well add in some sound effects too so it doesn't sound so boring. And there you have it. Once you grasp the simple concept and setup, you'll be blowing all kinds of objects to bits in no time. You can use it on stage levels, heroes, enemies, collectibles, walls, or buildings to add dramatic effect and realism to your 2D games. This technique can be used for clicker games, puzzle games, or really any game on pretty much any object you want to explode. Another thing to note, you can also use the advanced projectile extension on things like particles, so you can add a variety of effects to your blasts. I can do a quick and easy tutorial on that as well in a separate video. I hope this provides a helpful starting point for creating your own object explosions in your games. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and be on the lookout for the next video.